people comes in later, that's fine. We can get this going. Uh, so my name is Meng Chi Wang. I am the uh, K-12 Outreach Coordinator at the uh, Confucius Institute. Uh, I'm very happy to see everybody come to attend this um, Studying China Scholarship Info Session. Um, hopefully, you know, through today's presentation, I get to introduce some of the opportunities um, not only offered in uh, from the China side, but also from the uh, US side to kind of enhance your you know, language learning experience and give you an option to consider whether you want to pursue, you know, like a study abroad or further degree in China. Um, so the presentation today would be um, short. Um, I don't want to uh, dump a lot of information on all of you. The goal is to really provide a higher order understanding about what kind of options are there. So you walk away with a general idea about, you know, uh, what are the lens of programs are out there? Uh, what kind of coverage are the scholarships? So as you plan your college uh, in the future, your college education in the future, um, you can start to do, you know, incorporate that into your planning to see if this is, um, if there's any option to study in China that makes sense for you. So um, just throughout the presentation, if you have any questions, uh, you, can, you can raise your hand. Uh, I believe the function is in the um, participants tab. I think if you click that uh, tab on the bottom, uh, there should be a function that says uh, raise your hand. Um, and you could also type your question and then uh, Karen, my assistant can also help me kind of keep track of the question. I'll try to uh, respond to that um, as soon as possible. Um, great. Uh, actually, before we start, I kind of want to just get a general understanding about uh, what our audience are like. Right? So when I promote this event to the general public, it's not only just um, students at U, but I also um, promoted this to um, DLI students in high, in high school. So do a language immersion program in high school. Uh, some of you might know that Utah has, you know, the, uh, the biggest dual language immersion program. So we're also interested in bringing these opportunities to, to those students. So um, are any of you guys um, high school students? If you can raise your hand. Okay, Devin. Devin, Devin is my former student. <laughs> Great. So one of you is a high school student, and everybody else, I assume, is in is at the U and doing undergrad. Is anyone in graduate school? Okay. No. Okay. I, I am. I am. Sorry, I couldn't find my oh, mute. That's right. Catherine. Yeah. yeah. Great. Thank you. All right. So. One thing I want to start a presentation with mm -hmm. is this very general question. Why study in China? So all of you guys, you know, came today for the presentation. You must be thinking about, you know, the possibility of studying in China. Um, you know, I was, a, I was in, I am in, I was an international student here in the United States. You know, I come from China, and it took me a lot of, you know, effort and then consideration to decide to come to study in the United States. Uh, I kind of want to hear your perspective on why you want to study uh, in China or why you come to the presentation today. What are your goals? What are you? What do you hope to learn? Um, so, uh, does anyone want to volunteer and share your thought so I can get a better understanding about your thought process? I'd be happy to talk. Um, my name's Hi. Eric. Uh, I'm a senior uh, studying political science and urban planning. And I've lived in South Korea for a couple of years, so I'm nearly fluent in Korean. And I have a ton of interest in East Asia. Um, and so I've been interested in learning Mandarin for a while. And I have some friends from Beijing uh, that I met when I was in Seoul. And a lot of the issues that I'm interested in studying in politics and in environmental studies are influenced by, by China and its presence in the global economy. That's great. Thank you so much for sharing. Yeah. So, uh, have you ever been to China before? I have not. I I really want to visit at some point, though. 
That's great. That this presentation is for you. And also, have, are you are you currently learning Chinese? I've taken one semester in the past, um, and I'm planning on taking more language in the future. Um, but I don't know very much. Gotcha. Thank you. Great. So, anybody else who would like to share a little bit of your uh, perspective? Um, I can share. So, <laughs> I'm Olivia. Um, I've always been really interested in the culture and uh, my stepmom is actually from China and so that kind of influenced it a lot and so I went to China last October and I had a lot of fun and everything and I always want to learn abroad <laughs> and, <laughs> and so the economy is, is has a lot of, China has a lot of effect on the economy and everything so I was like yeah China is the place to go and there you go. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. That's that's some really good consideration. You're right. Like China's economy is is big now. Um, if you pursue learning Chinese, uh, the job opportunity will definitely expand. And like you said, it's just a lot of fun to go to China. Um, there's just so much to do, and everywhere you go is very different within China. Uh, great. Thanks so much for sharing. Uh, anybody else? Let's take one or two more. I can talk. Yeah. Yeah, um, so I actually studied abroad for like six weeks in um, Taiwan in the spring, but I got sent home because of uh, uh, break. But yeah, I just think the Chinese language and Chinese culture is super interesting and I loved studying abroad in Taiwan. And I was like super torn over whether to study abroad in Taiwan or in China. So now that I've studied abroad in Taiwan, I'm also super interested in studying in China, so. <laughs> That's great. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for so much. Thanks so much for sharing. So, uh, Emily, how long have you been learning Chinese? Um, I have taken two years of it at the U. Yeah. Right. And then you also spend spend some time in um, in Taiwan. So you 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 did spend some time in a Chinese speaking region. Yes, I did. Awesome. Thank you. All right. Let's All right. let's do one more. Any anyone else who would like to share? I can I'm share. Oh, we can have you both. We can we can have both of you. <laughs> Who was that? Sorry. Um. So I'm a junior. This is my second year studying uh, Mandarin. Uh, I'm also uh, studying uh, economics. So I think that there's a lot to be gained from being able to speak Chinese. So I just I I think the reason why I'd like to study is just to. Uh, be able to learn it better. Immersion is always really helpful, so. Great, thank you. And I'm Bridget. Uh, this is my fifth year studying Chinese. I wasn't oh, wow. able to raise my hand earlier, but I'm a high school student and my mother is from Taiwan, so that's why I'm interested in studying in China. Um, I wasn't able to read through your credentials because I have finals this week, but I think I saw something about coronavirus and I would like to know more about what's going on there concerning the new epidemic and China. Yeah, uh, so, oh, so are you, are, you, are you interested in learning how that affects study abroad? Is that the question? Well, I'm very interested in medicine and- uh, Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. That, yeah, we have something relevant to that too. So yeah, we can, we can definitely talk about that. Great. And I heard you teach at some school. Is that here in Utah? Um, I don't teach right now. I used to teach in high school. Um, are you thinking about another? Uh, we also have another event that's specifically about COVID on Wednesday. Um, do you, are you aware of that event as well? Um, no, this is the only one that I know of. Okay, yeah. You know, I, I'm going to talk about all of them. Uh, you know, in, in a second. So, and if you have more questions, we can we can chat more. Great. All right, sounds good. Thank you. Well, I'm glad you're here. We have like a really diverse crowd. You know, we have high school students. We have people who've been to a Chinese speaking region, and people who are just barely beginning to learn Chinese and that are just really interested. Hopefully, you know, I can bring this information to you, and then you can find something that's that's useful to you to help uh, your future planning. Great. I'm gonna go ahead mm -hmm. and then. The like next slide. So there are three major um, categories of scholarships I want to talk about today. And uh, by the way, I'm also going to publish this this video and also the slides on our website. So 
uh, feel free to take notes, but if you miss something, it's, it's fine. Don't, don't, don't sweat. So the, the first scholarship is called Confucius Institute Scholarship. So this is the one that would directly help uh, facilitate. And the next one is Chinese government scholarship. And the third category I'm gonna talk about is really just touched on is nationally competitive scholarships. So the first two categories are scholarships from China. They're funded by the Chinese government. And the last one is uh, either international scholarship or uh, scholarship funded by the US government. Um, so. Uh, for the last category, I'm going to highlight, you know, some of the, the names and just briefly talk about them because I'm not too much of an expert on that, but I will direct you to some resources you can learn more about. So the first type of scholarship I want to talk about is called a Confucius Institute Scholarship. And it has another name, it's called International Chinese Language Teachers Scholarship. So that name is a little bit, um, a little bit misleading. Uh, it is set up to encourage people to become people who are interested in become Chinese teachers to utilize the scholarship, but it also has some subcategories that help you just help language learners who want to go to China. But one thing just to keep in mind is for this particular category, the academic focus really is just on Chinese language and culture. So think about it as a strictly uh, something that improve your uh, opportunity to improve your, lang your language learning or to learn about China or Chinese culture or uh, language pedagogy in, Ch in Chinese. So it has a pretty narrow focus. Okay. And for this one, it has uh, various lengths, many different kinds of programs. The shortest one is four week and to one month, sorry, four week and one month are the same. <laughs> so four week, one semester, one year, and two full-on degree programs, including bachelor's degree, master's degree, and PhD, uh, PhDs. Uh, another thing to keep in mind is that there are many hosting institutions. So if you decide to pursue this kind of scholarship, uh, you pretty much get to choose you know, where in China you want to apply to. Uh, one last thing to keep in mind is that it's a, it's a partial to full scholarship. This will become more clear. Uh, the only one that's partial is the four week program. So uh, I made this chart to kind of summarize, you know, the specific different categories. Uh, I don't know if you, if you can see very clearly. I don't know if it's too small. Can you all see okay? It's a bit too small. It's a bit too small. Mm, I wonder, let's do this. Is that better? Can you guys see the see the website tab? We can see it. Okay, let's talk about the degree programs. Yes, because this might be just these are easy and but not necessarily be very relevant to you. So the degree programs really are just uh, TCSOL program. They're just for people who want to become Chinese teachers. So teaching Chinese to speakers of other languages, and they have certain you know criteria like a proficiency requirement. And they're typically a very high requirement because the goal is for you to become um, a Chinese teacher. And if you get a scholarship like this, uh, basically everything you wanna, basically every, every cost of your study is gonna be covered. So your tuition, your accommodation, your medical insurance, your living stipend. So other than the flights and the visa, you really don't have to worry about anything financial, financially speaking. Um, so I don't think that one might be very relevant because I haven't heard anyone who wants to be a Chinese teacher here. So let's go ahead and talk about the, uh, the non-degree programs, right? This might be more relevant to you. Um, so four-week program is really about, you know, Chinese medicine. You can learn Tai Chi or you can do, just learn Chinese language. You can do homestay. And it has a Pretty, pretty much like a no requirement in terms of language proficiency. It just wants you to take a HSK test. So H HSK test is a testing, a Chinese proficiency test that we, we help administer. And I'll talk more about that in the future. 
so it doesn't really say you know you whether whether you have to have a certain degree in the score. Uh, it just asks you to take a test. And I think the idea is for them to place you in an appropriate uh, program, whether you're like absolute beginner or you might be intermediate or you might be a higher level. Uh, they just want to make sure they, they at least know um, where you are at so they can play, place you in a program that's more meaningful to you. Uh, so this is the only one that, is, that does not provide a full scholarship, meaning that it doesn't provide a living stipend. That's all. So it covers tuition, it covers accommodation, it covers medical insurance, but no living stipend. So for that month, you have to pay for yourself, like food, uh, all of that. And all of this uh, scholarship is open to age from 16 to 35, unless you're currently a language teacher, and then you can apply if you're beneath 45. Any questions so far? Okay. So I think these two programs, the one semester study and the one academic year study might be more relevant to you all. Uh, so if we look at the content, uh, we have listed so many categories according to basically the official document. But if your interest is to, basically there's two, think about it in this way, there are two categories. One is language learning. So if your goal is solely to go to China to learn the language, this serve that purpose. But if your goal is to go to China to learn some content, you know, content subject about China or Chinese language, say Chinese history, Chinese philosophy, or Chinese medicine. So generally everything that falls within the category of China studies, if you think about that that way, right? Uh, that would work. So two, two fields, either language proficiency or content subject but it wouldn't be like engineering economics. It would be a content subject about China or Chinese culture. Um, so between the one semester and the one year, another big difference is the proficiency requirement, right? So for the one semester program, they want you to have a HSK level three at 180 points. So that is a passing score for HSK level three. Uh, what does it mean to achieve HSK level three? It means about one point, uh, well, uh, I think about three semesters study in Chinese. Uh, but some teachers say, you know, two semesters is doable as well. It is about 600 words to pass HSK level three. So if you're a dual language immersion student in high school, you're well beyond this level. Okay, if you're a beginner learner in college, you might want to spend a little bit more time. But my understanding is that in college, you have to take out, think up to a year of language, right? So by the end of the year uh, of learning in Chinese, you should be aiming to attain HSK level three. Um, so it's totally doable because 180 is just a passing score. Uh, 300 points is the total score. And then also ask for an HSKK score. That is just a speaking test. Notice that they didn't really stipulate what score you need, just says you need a score. Um, so that's the one semester study. But if you're going to just do something about Chinese, if you're going to just learn about traditional Chinese medicine and Tai Chi culture, so these are pretty narrow focus, right? Uh, they don't really have a very high requirement on HSK level or HSKK score, they just say it's preferred. You don't even need to have it. So if that's what you're interested in, you know, traditional Chinese medicine and Tai Chi culture, and I think the threshold for language proficiency is a lot lower. So far so good? Okay, so if you wanna pursue a one academic year study, uh, we have three different categories, right? If you wanna enroll in a class, in a program that focuses on language teaching, then it has a pretty high requirement on your HSK. It wants you to pretty much to be 90% at HSK level three. Whereas if you just wanna do uh, a China study pro program, like history, literature, philosophy, uh, wants you to be at HSK level four. Um, 
and 60 on HSKK, so the speaking test. So it has a pretty also fairly high requirement. Uh, whereas if you just want to learn the language, um, they want you to be at 70% percentile at HSK level three. Uh, that will give you a year study. And remember for both these programs, everything is covered. You don't have to pay for tuition. You don't have to pay for lodging. You will get a monthly stipend. Uh, you don't have to worry about healthcare, like a medica medical insurance. Um, so, so far so good. So basically to sum up, um, the Confucius Institute scholarship, you know, as the name indicates, you know, Confucius, it's more about study of China, right? Or the language, uh, it doesn't really cover a wider discipline. Um, for most of our students, I feel the one semester study and the one academic year study are the most appropriate. Uh, and they do require certain language proficiency um, in order for them to offer you the scholarship. Do you have any questions at this point? Okay. Another thing I want to mention really quick is that because the length of these programs are very different, right? So when do you apply varies, like the deadline to apply varies. So if you're interested in this, you know, I, I'll point you to further resources to read about it. And then if you plan further, you want to know, okay, when is the deadline? You know, how do I plan my study or application according to that deadline? All right, let's move on to the next one. So Chinese government scholarship. So this one is very different from the other one. It's complementary to the other one, right? So it focuses on all disciplines and there are 289 universities that offer that program. So wherever you wanna go in China, you can probably find an institution that will host you, right? So the Specific academic programs are also school specific, meaning that uh, this school might offer say economics, they might offer history, engineering, computer science, you know, environmental science, the other schools might not. So that's something you wanna keep in mind as you research where you wanna go. And one thing I need, to uh, I need to highlight is that for the Chinese government scholarship, it's strictly for degree programs. It's for bachelor degree, master's degree, and PhD degrees. Whereas this might not have entered your mind, you know, to pursue another degree in another foreign country, especially, uh, of, you know, China, would you probably just, some of you are starting to learn the language. But this is something that you, sh that you, can, you should know, and then maybe in the future you will be interested and that would, this would be an option. And I, I, I personally know many of my American friends who actually have, are pursuing degree in China. I recently just helped a friend who to apply for a bachelor's degree uh, in China. So he is actually taking Chinese classes online now because of the pandemic, he can't go yet. And another uh, friend that I know, he's working in a company, uh, a pharmaceutical company. Now he's pursuing, um, artificial intelligence master's program, not in a public school in China, but in uh, NYU, New York University, Shanghai, uh, because he think, you know, China is pretty strong in artificial intelligence right now. And he really wants to, you know, get into, get into that market and then kind of just know the culture and the, mar and the, co the market, the business culture over there. So anyway, so coming back to the scholarship, um, they are, there are programs that are taught in English or Chinese. So that's another thing you wanna look into. Uh, some of the most highly prestigious universities in China offer um, some really good English programs that really target um, a lot of the, you know, engineering talents or business talents. Um, so you will have to look into specific schools in order to know what kind of programs they offer. So. Keep in mind that you don't necessarily have to do a Chinese program in China. It could be an English program. And they just want you to demonstrate your English proficiency. Uh, since I think all of you are native speakers, so that would just be 
uh, you don't have to worry too much about it. And all Chinese government scholarships are full scholarship. So they cover your tuition, your dorm, your living stipend, and medical insurance. In terms of dorm, if you do not want to live on campus, they also give you a stipend to rent outside of campus. But the stipend is not enough usually to rent like a glamorous place. Uh, basically, they're just, they just encourage students to stay on campus, they budget for that. But if students do not want to, they have the option, they give you some support, but you might have to kind of, you know, just pitching a little bit more money from, from your own pocket in order to, to resolve that. Um, as you research about Chinese government scholarship, and I'll show you on the website in a bit, you're also going to see some notions such as local government scholarship or universal, university scholarship. You don't have to worry too much about them. They're all Chinese government scholarships. Um, it is just, uh, I think the government, the Ministry of Education have different schemes to, to implement and then budget the scholarship. For some university, it's pretty much centrally administered by the Ministry of Education. So they only have like a Chinese government scholarship as a title. Other universities might have their uh, further budget to develop their own program. So they may have something called a universal, university scholarship. This is the same for local government scholarship. Some city or some province might have their own program. Um, so, but typically the application process is very similar. Uh, the friend that I was referring to that, are, that is currently pursuing a bachelor's degree in a Chinese university, he applied for Chinese government scholarship, but he didn't get that. So this university gave him, gave him um, a university scholarship, which is basically the same, except with a, just a little bit less uh, in the stipend, still pretty ample for living in China. Um, so if you wanna research about Chinese government scholarship, this is the website to go, campuschina.org. We can take a quick look. So um, if you click the scholarship over here, uh, it has many categories, but I actually do not suggest you to read uh, into too much of them because some of them don't apply and they can be also confusing. Um, I would just, if you ever want to read about it, I would just read the first one, Introduction to Chinese Government Scholarship. We can just take a quick look at the coverage of the, um, of the scholarship. Um, so if you pursue a different degree program, the tuition is different, but tuition, if you get a scholarship, tuition would all be covered. And also the accommodation. Um, and your stipend is uh, listed here. And that would be more than enough for you to live uh, in China. Like it's not gonna be like a glamorous income, but it's almost just like when you work as a teaching assistant here uh, in the United States in, in the college as well. So you don't really have to worry about uh, your livelihood. Uh, you should have sufficient money um, to go about everyday life. Um, another thing I wanna point out really quickly is that um, if your language proficiency is not on target, they will ask you to take a year or two uh, language classes, depending on the major. If you're in the humanities, they might ask you to take two. If you're in the engineering science, it might be one. So the duration of this, the study uh, might be longer than a typical program. But you walk away with a language and a degree. And when you learn the language, you also have scholarship. So everything is covered. It's not like when you're learning the language, you haven't started your major study yet. They don't offer you scholarship. That's not the case. The entire, the entire duration of your study is covered. So you don't really have to spend a penny on school. And uh, really this is, you know, like I said, there's, there are so many universities, right, in China and there are so many regions, you might not really know where to go, right? I would say, you know, the best way to go about kind of exploring this just to get to know what schools are out there, what their culture are like, where they are, what their strengths are in, it's really just to go to see the rankings of the universities in China. Um, and you can just kind of go down the list, you know. So um, 
just to see if this is the if they offer any academic programs that are very strong. For example, um, we can take a look at I think so Beijing Normal University is also very highly ranked. What I suggest you do, you know, is just find the name of the university, and you can search for uh, that name plus admission. And then you can go to their page. So like for this university, they have a tab for international students. And you can just kind of read about like what kind of programs they offer. Uh, see, they also have non-degree programs, but they might not be eligible for a scholarship. Um, just something to keep in mind. So yeah, if you are interested in a university because maybe it's in a certain region, or it has a strong um, program, just search for the name plus admission that will typically bring you to the website. Um, reasons why we, I recommend going through a ranking because well, first off, we all wanna go to a good university, right? Secondly, typically the, the highly ranked university have more international program. So they do a better job at their, their website infrastructure and then communication with international students. You don't want to reach a university that's probably not very high ranked. They don't really take in a lot of international students. So they might not even know what they're doing. And then you, you can't get an answer you need, right? Um, another reason is that, you know, we know that in China, the college entrance exam nation is very competitive. When you go to a very highly ranked university, you'll be immersed with basically the future leaders of China. So I think that's another perk of studying in China. Like you will actually be building connection and really just, uh, yeah, building connection with people that might be the leaders of China in all kinds of sectors. Um, I think that is a benefit um, a lot of people didn't see, but it's really worth, you know, thinking about like the strategic um, significance of that. So to recap, you know, the Chinese government scholarship is strictly degree programs and full scholarship, uh, full scholarship. They are taught in both English or Chinese. And to understand it more, you kind of have to go into each individual schools to know what programs they offer. Um, and if there's something you're interested in, you know, I can help you to go through and navigate a process of, of uh, applying to the scholarship. And also they have, they definitely have requirement on uh, language proficiency. Um, if you do not achieve the proficiency, they will ask you to take classes. Uh, but you, you, it, it could be really hard for you to apply for the scholarship if you don't have any proficiency. So any questions so far here? So I mentioned HSK testing before. Um, if you want to know more about the testing, I suggest you to go to um, this website. This is where you register the test. It has some kind of, it has some practice uh, that you can look at and then question and answer that will help you understand the test a little bit more. Um, and we also offer tests uh, regularly. Right now during COVID, uh, occasionally we offer uh, online testing, uh, which we would list on our website. So we do have an upcoming test, two tests actually. One is on the 31st this month, which the registration deadline has passed. But on, uh, in December, we have another uh, test date. Um, so if you're interested, you know, you've learned Chinese for a semester or two, you wanna give it a try just to see where you are at. You know, talk with your teacher, ask them, you know, what kind of proficiency you're at, which level you should take. Or you can ask me as well, and I can find out the answer for you. And you can just take the test and see where you are at, you're at. And then that would probably help you to plan future uh, if scholarship um, is what you're thinking. And also, uh, 
having that on your resume is also good when you look for a job in the future. There is a concrete proof of your uh, language proficiency. So those are the two main scholarships that our office, you know, Confucius Institute is more involved in. Um, before I move on to the nationally competitive scholarships, I don't know if you have any questions and comments um, at this moment. All right, if not, let's just talk really quickly about the nationally competitive scholarships. Yeah, I, I know like the scholarships are all over the places. They're administered by different, you know, campus units, different institutions. It really is very hard to navigate. Like before I came to the United States, I was looking for a scholarship as well. I had to go through every single each department that I'm interested in and then take notes on what they offer, what they don't, and then that line and all of that. It is a pretty arduous process, but I would say the gain is worth it. When you actually get the money, somebody paying for you to learn something, and then you get to go to another foreign country to have a complete new adventure. I think the amount of hours you put in that work is totally worth it. So, um, so these are the few scholarships uh, that are related to language learning that is administered by Office of Nationally Competitive Scholarships uh, at the University of Utah. So the first two, uh, I think Schwarzman Scholarship and Yenqing Academy of Peking University program, these two are highly prestigious. Um, they do have pretty high requirement and they're also degree programs. And if you just do a quick search, if you have a LinkedIn profile or something like that, right? So if you do a quick search of Schwarzman Scholarship or Yenqing Academy of Peking University, you would find that it's a, it's a very competitive scholarship and people who are very successful tend to have that in their background and their experience. Uh, they're both degree program that you, which helps you to learn about international eco economics, you know, China's political economy um, and history in China at two of the best universities in China. For Schwarzman Scholarship, it is uh, Tsinghua University, and the second one is Peking University. So it, 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 they also have a very good website that you can very easily navigate to see um, what, what they offer and the students' experience. So I'd encourage you to explore that. Uh, so these two are not administered by any governmental agency. And, and critical language scholarship, this one is, I think, administered by the US government. Uh, I think every year there are six quota. And it's also a very competitive scholarship. I think they offer quite a bit of um, funding for that. And um, Born scholarship uh, is also for language study. And Fulbright, some of you might know, that would uh, give you an opportunity to a foreign region to uh, pursue either language study or you teach English or you do research. Something, to, something worth looking into. And another uh, very competitive scholarship is FLAS scholarship, uh, Foreign Language and Area Studies Scholarship. This is for people who are currently, I think, pursuing a language learning uh, on campus. Uh, we actually are going to our office, so not, not Confucius Institute, but International and Area Studies office is actually going to offer more info sessions on this scholarship. So if you click this link, it will bring you to some of the future dates of the info session. And if you're in interested in that scholarship, um, you should go check that one out. And it covers your, it provides tuition stipend and also living stipend, sorry, it covers tuition and living stipend when you study at the U. Uh, for our high school students here, we're going to deliver a special info session specifically for the DLI or high school students uh, at this, uh, sorry, November the 11th, 5.30. We don't have a Zoom link ready yet, uh, but we kind of separate the info session into two categories, one for university students, one for incoming high school students, and specifically those in the DLI program. And if you want to read more about a nationally competitive scholarship, you can go to the, this website.
And the program manager is Allison Shimko. Uh, she's really nice. Um, the website lists all different kinds of scholarship. You know, some of you are also have, you know, you also major in other fields. Uh, and there are scholarships that would apply to other academic pursuits. So it's not just learning Chinese or going to another uh, region. So I would encourage you to explore this um, to see what might be a good fit for you and then apply to them. Cool. So hopefully, you know, I, when, when I publish this, you know, you know where to look for, uh, for further information. And if you have a question, you can also ask me the question. I can also direct your question to the person that can best answer your question. Um, but here is Allison's contact. She's the main person in charge of administering the application of all of these scholarships. Okay, with that said, I hope there are a few key takeaways. Okay, one is that no matter what your academic goals are or the lens of your study, chances are you can find a full scholarship. So I want people to walk away knowing this, that if you want to spend the time to go to China, uh, you also want to actually learn the language, chances are the finance, you know, there wouldn't be necessarily a financial burden. So that's one thing I really want people to keep in mind. Uh, I understand that we, our office didn't really communicate about scholarship too much in the past. So I really want to make sure people know so when you think about your future academic career, uh, you have some option in your mind as you plan. Uh, second point is that, you know, different scholarships have different deadlines, different proficiency requirements, and they're usually administered by different institutions. So today we've seen some administered by the Chinese government, some are by independent agencies, some by the US government, right? And then there are also different point persons, right? So students you know, need to research regularly and you have to think strategically and plan early, right? By thinking strategically, you know, I'm, I mean, you, know, you have to think about, okay, how much, how much further I wanna learn my Chinese? What are some of the goals I wanna achieve? Um, does that align with my goal to study abroad? Um, and also I understand a lot of students want to graduate as soon as possible, right? So when you study abroad, when you spend a lot of time abroad, uh, it's gonna take away, it's gonna delay your graduation, right? Um, is it worth it? You know, questions like that, that it's better to start thinking about them and, and think long-term and plan early. Um, I personally think, you know, if you can, you should go study abroad. And in fact, the reason why I decided to come to the United States is because I got a scholarship in my, after my junior year in, in college to come study at the uh, Georgetown University in DC. So I spent five weeks there and that was a really, really valuable experience. Um, a funny joke, first time when I had, a, I have two American roommates who always greet me with what's up. Despite being an English major, I just never know how to respond to them. And I panic every time I saw them because they're gonna ask me what's up and I do not know how to respond. So, you know, even if I studied English for so long, you know, you have to really go to the target language region to fully appreciate what, what you have to learn and what else you can experience. So I think it's a great experience if you can afford the time to do that. Once you graduate, you start a job, it gets really hard <laughs> to do any of that. I can tell you from my personal experience. Uh, the third takeaway is that Usually some kind of Chinese proficiency is required uh, for all the programs from China, uh, HSK or HSK KK score uh, is expected. So that's something you should be thinking, right? Like maybe talk with your professor about where you're at, you know, how, how, how does the curriculum align with HSK testing? You can also talk to me as well. Um, and you can set some small goal, goals, you know, like I, I wanna take HSK one or two or three in two months, five months, half a year, and then keep yourself going. And once you achieve the certain score, you meet a criteria to apply for the scholarship. The last takeaway I hope is to make sure you talk with university staff whenever you have questions. Uh, so 
for all the scholarship from the Chinese, Chinese side, you can talk to me. Um, and even for the National Competitive Scholarship, you're just interested in going to China, you can talk to me and I can direct you to other person who directly administer those scholarship. But just know who you can talk to, you know, keep, keep in touch with them, um, that would help you. And the, whenever I have other programs that come up, I, you know, I can also readily communicate to you as well. Um, one last thing I wanna recommend is three YouTube channels that I really like. These are three persons that, that live, that studied and lived in China. Uh, the first one's Kui Zhou. His channel is elementary Chinese. What he does mostly is teaching you really quick lessons about uh, speaking something very idiomatically in Chinese in, in real situation. He would go to Starbucks to order coffee. He would go to McDonald's to order, order food to demonstrate to you how to speak Chinese. But sometimes he also interview other people who have studied and lived in China. So he's interviewed people who are in degree programs in China from Africa. He's interviewed people who are professional photographer working in China, they're from the US. You know, he tried to bring perspective of those who are currently in China. So I hope that will help you to understand and appreciate um, you know, what it's like to live and study in China. And the second person is Blondie in China. So she also studied in China before, but what she does right now, mostly with her channel is um, introducing food and the cities, cities she went all over China. Uh, she also sometimes talk about her experience studying Chinese uh, or studying Chinese in China. So I think that would also be very helpful. The last person, uh, Kai Ya. So she actually went to China without knowing any Chinese right after high school. So a very unusual and surprising case. She's very adventurous and she initially hated, like she did not like it and she was ready to leave. But there was a huge shift and she also improved her Chinese law. So you can also go to her channel to just kind of understand her perspective. I kept her here because I think she um, is, she's really valuable in terms of talking, uh, how you start with something that's really challenging when you just move to another country, you don't know anything, you have no friends, you don't have the language and how, how she eventually came to appreciate that entire experience. So with that said, that's, that's the, the end of the presentation. You know, I hope um, that was helpful to uh, give you some idea on what other options are available out there. So as you move forward, you have those in mind and then you can plan accordingly and you know who to talk to um, if you have questions. So we have a little bit more time. I'm just gonna open this up for questions and comments. And I would encourage you to follow us on Instagram and also check out our website uh, on other events that we do.